The choice between the Galaxy Z Flip 5 and Moto Razr Plus is a really tough call. Both flip phones have embraced the ideal design of this form factor with a large outer screen that lets you do more without opening it up. But despite some superficial similarities, the flip and the razor are totally different in their execution. And as we'll see in this video, that means there are plenty of reasons why you could argue the case for either Samsung or Motorola. But as always, we have to choose one winner and we will. So let's get into it. I'm Alex Toby, this is XDA TV. It's time to decide which is the best flip phone you can buy right now. Thankfully, these days, foldable phones are a pretty mature product category. As such, neither of these two clamshells has any kind of gap between their two halves when they're folded shut. Otherwise, though, there are plenty of design changes to talk through. Motorola's phone is curvier in contrast to the more angular Samsung Flip. That's especially so around the edges of the cover display and the metal sidewalls that you'll be gripping onto most of the time. The design of the Galaxy, on the other hand, is very much in keeping with its most recent progenitors. The edges are softened, but there's definitely a chunkier feel all round, even though this is a pretty lightweight device. I'd give a small ergonomic win to Motorola here. I definitely don't hate the way the Flip 5 looks or feels, but the design of the Razer gives more the impression of a regular sleek slab-shaped smartphone when it's opened out. Basically, if you jumped five years into the future and looked at the flip phones of that time, I bet they'd more closely resemble Moto's efforts here than Samsung's. Aesthetically, it's just a bit more svelte looking, even if, ironically, the flip is actually a fraction of a millimeter thinner in reality. The curved sides do a good job of fooling your brain like that. We already touched on the hinge design a little, but it's worth pointing out the few other differences that are going on here. First up, the display crease. Now, this isn't something that especially bothers me, but Samsung's crease definitely is more noticeable here, with more of a visible divot when the flip is opened out. However, the Galaxy does win in a couple of other important areas. Its hinge is tighter, meaning it's easier to keep held open at an angle when you're using it in flex mode or taking photos with it propped up. With the Razer, by comparison, there's just a slight looseness to this hinge, especially around the 45 degree mark. Not horrible by any means, but the sturdier Samsung hinge definitely feels superior to me. When it's opened out, Motorola also does give you a slightly larger primary display, 6.9 inches to Samsung 6.7. But brightness and display quality is kind of a mixed bag across both the external and internal displays of both phones. So starting off with the inner screens, I felt Samsung's panel held up much better in direct sunlight and outdoor conditions in general. And that's a bit weird considering Moto has a higher peak brightness rating on paper. Nevertheless, time and time again, the Galaxy's main screen was more usable outside. It's possible this was just down to more aggressive auto brightness in the flip, or perhaps just a more reflective screen protector being used on the Razer. Either way, in outdoor use, I preferred Samsung's panel. The Razer's outer screen is significantly dimmer on the spec sheet versus Samsung, 1100 nits versus 1750. But again, despite this on-paper disparity, I found them to be pretty comparable in day-to-day -day use. Samsung's definitely looked brighter to me under the summer sun, but Moto's wasn't far behind. And then there's the fact that Moto's cover display can boast a smooth 120Hz refresh rate, whereas Samsung's stuck at 60Hz. Again, this is a noticeable difference even in basic activities like scrolling through widgets on the outer display. Moto definitely feels more responsive, whereas there is what I can only describe as a certain kludginess to the way Samsung's cover screen responds to touches and swipes. The other big difference, of course, is the screen shape itself. Samsung goes with the wedge-shaped cutout here as part of its more compact cover panel. Moto, meanwhile, has its cameras cut directly out of the panel, which allows apps to fill in a larger area, though with bits of the UI sometimes being occasionally obfuscated. Some people hate this, but I don't particularly mind when you can work around it with a simple long press here. So this is where we need to talk at least briefly about software, specifically the way the cover screens are handled in software. Motorola's feels much more like an extension of the Android experience you get when the phone is opened out. Sure, the home screen carousel is built around widgets, but key things like quick settings and notifications work more like the regular Android UI. On the flip, it's a simpler, more pared back experience with these cards being the central focus. And things like multitasking are slower because there's no task switcher. In fact, using apps on the cover screen of the Flip 5, which should be a major hallmark feature of this phone, feels slightly undercooked compared to Moto's approach. Only a tiny handful of apps are officially supported. In order to open up the cover screen to any others, you need to use Samsung's UI tweaking app Goodlock, navigate to the iHeart Galaxy foldable section, and add them from there. 
Even then, you'll run into more compatibility issues than with the Razer. Classic example here, Slack sometimes appears with the UI scaling broken on the flip, depending on whether it was previously used on the main screen or not. These kinds of compatibility issues, though, aren't exclusive to the flip. And Android as a whole, I think, needs to do more to make apps more usable on smaller panels like this. Google Maps here, for example, is hopeless in navigation mode on the flip due to scaling issues, and it's not much better on the Razer either. But yeah, between the more simplistic UI and the absence of multitasking gestures on the flip, it seems like at times getting to the thing that you want to do requires more thought and swiping and tapping on the Samsung phone compared to Moto. Samsung's cover screen does have many things going for it though. It's easier to switch out of the primary clock widget here depending on your mood for the day. The fact that the panel is 60Hz obviously saves some battery power when it's in use compared to the 120Hz of the Razer. And having this widget card centric layout does make certain things easier. For example, swiping right from home always brings you to your notifications and a left swipe always shows you the media card for whatever you're listening to. It's a more predictable experience though, arguably less powerful than what Motorola has to offer. So yeah, given the choice, I would always favor the Moto cover screen experience. And I think Samsung has a lot to learn from the Razer here as it's developing its next generation of flip phones. Both of these clamshell phones feel fast and responsive, especially when opened out to reveal their extra long internal screens. On the inside though, Samsung has a technical advantage thanks to its use of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy, the special, slightly higher clocked version of Qualcomm's latest chip. The Razer makes do with the previous Snap 8 Plus Gen 1, which, although it is older, is still perfectly fine as a CPU. Either way, the half-generation gap in silicon isn't going to make much of a noticeable difference outside of artificial benchmarks and heavy gaming. And let's face it, if gaming is your priority, chances are neither of these phones are going to be your first choice. Even in terms of battery life, neither of these phones has a substantial lead with my usage patterns. Given the relatively small cell sizes of 3700 and 3800 milliamp hours for the Flip and the Razer respectively, these are one day phones at best. Don't expect anywhere near a second day of use unless you're barely using them. And with both of these, you can easily chew through a good quarter of that battery if you're streaming for a couple of hours with Bluetooth audio. Both support wireless charging, which is great to see, as well as pretty comparable fast wired charging speeds, 25 watts of the Flip and 30 for the Razer. The biggest difference in actual performance though has to do with the camera setup. And if you've seen our comparison between the Flip 4 and this new Razer, you'll already know where I'm headed with this. Even though both phones pack dual rear cameras, the Razer just can't really compete. At every level, Moto's cameras are outdone by Samsung. Whether it's detail, colors, noise, video stabilization, you'll get superior photos and video out of Samsung's cameras, mainly due to the larger sensors and more advanced processing. And the less said about Moto's anemic ultrawide, which is barely any wider than the primary camera of the Flip, the better. What's more, Samsung's technical edge as well gives you some nice to have extras like 8K video at 30 FPS or stabilized video without any judders at 4K 30. It's possible to take perfectly acceptable pictures for social media with the Razer camera with a similar ceiling in terms of image quality versus Samsung in ideal lighting, but the floor for photo quality on that Moto phone, well, it's low. It's like using a mid-range Android camera from a few years ago. It's very much a C-tier camera experience versus the solid B-tier that you get with Samsung. Photography really is the biggest letdown for me for the Motorola clamshell, to the point where, personally, it's probably a deal breaker, even more so than the handful of other spec areas where the Razer is slightly behind the flip, for example, the IP52 splash resistance, as opposed to IPX8 water resistance offered by Samsung. Although I'll definitely admit that Moto's cover screen experience is superior between the quicker display and more capable software, Samsung's outer screen still gets the job done and is a marked improvement over the Flip 4. Meanwhile, GoodLock is a reasonable band-aid over some of the functionality gaps that are present in the software right now, and Samsung's excellent One UI software experience for the main screen is every bit as capable as it is on slab phones like the S23, with only the DeX desktop mode standing out as the lone software emission. That combined with the longer software support offered by Samsung, an extra year compared to Motorola, sways the overall verdict in favor of the Galaxy for me. It's a more rounded product, and as much as I do wish Samsung had taken a slightly different approach with its cover screen software, the Flip has to take the win in my opinion. But that's just me. Let me know which one you choose down in the comments and why. Stick around for more foldable coverage coming in the next few weeks and months. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.